So there's some really important characteristics of laminar flows in terms of sediment transport and, and their deposits. Right? So with a laminar flow, uh, well specifically we can talk about ice here. The, the sediments of any grain size are transported downstream by the and with the ice crystals, right? And so the flow speed has no influence on which grains can be transported. And unlike with the Holstrom diagram, w with um, the turbulent flows where the grain size that's transported varies with the flow speed. That's true of the Holstrom diagram for water, which we've been using, is true for air, is, is true for turbulent fluids but not for laminar uh, uh, flows, right? So a really important key point is that uh, the gr there's no dependence uh, between the flow speed and grain size. As you start getting to uh, transitional flows, uh, there uh, can be some dependence. And then if you have high density flows where the grains are colliding against each other, you can get some grain sorting as well. And, but that's usually more in the, um, the transitional zone of the flows. Okay. So the second thing is that um, because the grains are all traveling parallel to each other, there's n they, they, they don't get organized into bed forms like ripples and dunes the way they do in, in a turbulent flow. So if we think about ice flowing over rock again, right, so we have our ice flowing here, at the bottom of the bed, first of all, the grains stay in suspension in the ice. Um, some of them will be down near the bottom here, right? And they'll be drug along. Um, and maybe there will be some, some uh, irregularity that isn't um, abraded away yet, right? The grains can come here, but but in general, they're, they're trying to flow up and over this irregularity with the ice. So you can get some deformation associated with irregularities, but they're never ripples or dunes. And the key thing to think about with that is that to get the ripples and dunes, you have to have uh, sort of a, the self-organization and interaction between grains and the flow where the grains are moving at different speeds on the upstream side of the ripple and the downstream side. Here, the, all the grains are moving uh, together with the ice. So one of the key aspects is that there's no cross stratification. Uh, deposited from laminar flows. All right, so ice does melt into liquid water and liquid water will transport the sediment and can create that, that cross stratification. But if you see cross stratification uh, in a rock, it was not, that cross stratification did not form in the laminar flow itself. Right? So uh, this is true of laminar flows in addition to ice, say for example, mud flows or debris flows, which can have a very high viscosity. There's no dependence between the flow speed and the grain size if it's truly laminar, and there's no cross stratification. If cross stratification is associated with the flow, it was deposited from a turbulent uh, flow associated with the laminar flow. Like for example, the liquid water melting from ice 
or sometimes in a mud flow, liquid water will flow out from between uh, the mud grains. Thanks for watching.